Okay, so what is poliovirus and how does it cause poliomyelitis? Welcome back to another video and we're going to be talking about poliovirus as a whole and an overview in simple terms. So, okay, picornavirus and where poliovirus comes into it. Well, picornavirus, and notice how I've got the RNA in capitals because this is an RNA virus, is a positive sense RNA virus and it's a family of viruses. So this includes the genus of enterovirus. And poliovirus then is a species of the enterovirus. Here's a mnemonic. Perch on the peak. P perch on the peak. Peak would be your picorna virus. And perch is, of course, for P for polio, E for echovirus, R for rhinovirus, C for Coxsackie virus, and H for hep A virus. So, poliovirus is therefore an enterovirus, which is part of the picorna virus family. This genus is called enterovirus because these typically infect the intestinal, epithelial, and lymphoid cells, such as the tonsils and the Peyer's patches. These viruses are excreted in the feces and spread by fecal-oral route. So this is what makes them kind of enteroviruses. The poliovirus. Poliovirus is a positive sense RNA virus, single-stranded, and in the last video we discussed what the difference is between positive and negative sense RNA viruses, um, and we will discuss kind of more to do with naked viruses and enveloped viruses. So, it's acid stable, of course it has to be acid stable if it's going to be fecally orally transmitted because that therefore it will be able to withstand the high, um, the acidity, the high acidity of the GI. What's special about poliovirus is that it replicates in the Peyer's patches, which are these aggregates of lymphoid tissue. I've done an anatomy video in the past, and these are found in the submucosa of the ileum. So the fact that the poliovirus has the ability to do something, that will explain how it causes the symptoms, such as in the title of the video, how it will cause the poliomyelitis. Okay, so poliovirus can infect cells in the pears patches of the intestine, as we discussed, and the motor neurons in the anterior horn, specifically the lower motor neurons of the spinal cord. Well, the fact that it can infect the cells in the pears patches um, kind of uh, reassures you that it is fecal-oral mode of transmission. And the fact that it affects and damages the motor neurons of these lower motor neurons, that's what causes, that explains how it can cause the disease of paralytic poliomyelitis. So I've got this diagram from this website and the pathophysiology behind the poliovirus. Well, the virus initially replicates in the tonsils right or the pears patches tonsils also have lymphoid and the this virus can then spread to the blood and across the blood cns barrier and then to the anterior horn of the spinal cord so in fact because of the initial replication in the tonsils the virus can indeed be um, actually spread by respiratory secretions as well as the usual fecal oral route um, early in the course of the infection. Sorry. And replication in the Paris patches takes two to three weeks. So how does poliovirus cause poliomyelitis and paralysis? Well, this is a lytic virus. That means it will cause destruction of anterior horn motor neurons, as we've said. And the key findings here, the key things you need to know for any kind of board exams or um, med school is that paralytic polio is a flaccid asymmetric paralysis. However, there is no sensory loss. And in the more most severe form, it can cause something called 
bulbar poliomyelitis, which causes paralysis of the respiratory muscles. And what exactly is bulbar paralysis? Well, this is weakness of muscles innervated by cranial nerves, okay? And the other symptoms, there, the key thing here to understand is that poliovirus doesn't immediately cause paralysis. And this virus actually was... Um, it can initially cause symptoms such as fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, just kind of mild illness, okay? So actually, there are three disease manifestations. There's one mild illness, then aseptic meningitis, and in most, most severe cases, kind of like something like 1% to 3% of people actually develop the most severe paralysis. Um, the initial forms include fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, stiffness in the neck, in the limbs. In a small portion of cases, it will cause paralysis, as we've said. So that all depends on whether or not we get to the whole destruction of the motor neurons. Oh, we've already had this. So something to think about. Um, Firstly, just to just to re really drill in this concept, poliovirus often will just cause um, those fever-like symptoms, initial infection-like symptoms, and that will occur after the viremia, which is the virus entering the blood. Now, it does not typically go straight to the spinal cord and start damaging the motor neurons, damaging the motor neurons, no. Typically, it will present with viremia, and then after, it will cause those couple of symptoms. In those few, few, few cases, will it then somehow get to the spinal cord, and then or across the meninges, meningitis, and then get to the spinal cord, and then cause paralysis? Now, something to think about. Um, poliovirus causes asymmetric paralysis. There was something called the paralytic illness of Franklin D. Roosevelt, and people believe that FDR had um, polio, but in fact, um, his symptoms did not actually match polio. They were more typical of Guillain-Barre syndrome, and that's just something to note that people can mistake it. For misto people actually did mistake it for poliovirus, though it was GBS, and key. That's why it's important to um, recognize the differentials of polio and how it can cause asymmetric paralysis. This is um, when it gets to uh, causing issues with respiration. Because, for example, in the bulbar paralysis, cranial nerves, those cranial nerves that would then innervate those things that are those muscles that are responsible you know so here when we when it progresses to respiratory respiratory muscles paralysis um in the 1920s 1930s 1940s they use these um iron chambers these iron chambers for kids who had um the respiratory muscle paralysis um, also, remember the aseptic meningitis. In fact, all enterovirus are capable of causing aseptic meningitis. The vaccines that were a big medical miracle once uh, they were developed are the Salk vaccine and the Sabin vaccine. The Salk vaccine is a killed vaccine that is injected. However, this one bypasses the GI tract and only forms IgG antibodies rather than IgA. Sabin was the better one, but actually it's not the better one because it can increase risk. And that's why the U.S. typically uses the soft vaccine rather than Sabin. But Sabin was the one that was initially used more frequently. This is the live attenuated vaccine, which does make IgA since it does go through the stomach mucosa. All right, that's it um, for today. Hope this video simplified things. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm um, trying to get to 500 subscribers. All right, thank you.